Are you tired of doing virtually no damage in Dead Cells? <laughs> Do you want to melt through bosses and one-shot enemies in biomes? Well, this guide is for you. My name is Psyche, and today I will show you what you can do in Dead Cells to min-max your damage and take your gameplay to the next level. To start off, one thing to be mindful is your scroll count. Despite what the interface says that each scroll gives plus 15% damage increase, the increase is actually not linear. Your damage output doesn't get better per scroll count equally. In actuality, it's on a curve. The more scrolls you have in one stat, the more powerful you'll be when using weapons of that color. This is very important, especially in the late game, when you really need your damage to matter without getting overwhelmed. If you find an amulet, always, always prioritize the one that gives the most scrolls for your desired stat. I don't care how good those affixes are, unless it's win the game, you always want to chase those stats like how you chase waifus in gacha games. Yeah, boy. To illustrate this, imagine that you do 1 damage per hit at base stat. You would think that with each scroll, you would do plus 1 to your damage. So you would do 2 damage per hit at 2 scrolls, 3 damage at 3 scrolls, and onwards. But this is actually not the case. In reality, imagine that you do 1 damage at base stat, 2 damage at 2 scrolls, then 4 damage at 3 scrolls, 8 damage at 4 scrolls and onwards. As you can see, the more stats you have, the more damage increase you get with each additional scroll. Of course, in actuality, in-game the curve isn't actually this steep. You'll definitely see the difference in damage output at around 20 to 30 stats. In essence, focus all the scrolls you find into one stat. This means completely clearing out biomes, Find the scroll fragments if you're on 3 BC and up, keep your eyes peeled for challenge rifts, and do all of the curse chests. This is something I always mention in most of my past guides, as stat spreading is one of the most common beginner mistakes. Secondly, I'm going to talk about synergies. I did do a video on this way earlier when I first started YouTube, but that one hasn't aged too well. Now, a question you might be asking yourself when doing runs is, there are so many items in the game, what do I even pick for my weapons? Well, you'll probably notice that some weapons have a critical hit condition that does even more damage. For example, Assassin's Dagger does crits whenever you hit an enemy from the back. It goes hand in hand with the Phaser skill, which teleports you behind an enemy every couple seconds. Seda Stiletto lands crits whenever you hit an enemy with bleeding or poison. Throwing Knife, Sinew Slicer, Alchemic Carbine, the Open Wounds mutation, and so on. Impaler hits for additional damage when the enemy is against a wall. You could probably pair this with the Assault Shield, which like I did in my Impaler Showcase. Dashing into enemies, pushing them back into walls, and then putting them at the perfect spot to impale them. Sometimes there are multiple ways to satisfy the crit condition, so feel free to use your weapons and skills to get creative. So this is a footage that a viewer sent to me. They're running Seda Stiletto with the electric whip. Now, while they are independently strong weapons, notice how they're not using them both equally. In the giant fight, because this player does not have a good way to activate the crit condition for Seda Stiletto, it leads to a lot of downtime, which causes Stiletto to pretty much become a bricked weapon. So something you can ask yourself in runs is, are you using both the items in your weapon slots equally? Some generally good support weapons have fast, status-afflicting effects like Firebrand and Throwing Knife. However, sometimes synergy alone is not quite enough, but what will really bring out your damage is in affixes. So this is an aspect that I've largely neglected in my previous guides. You've probably seen the tiny text below each of one of your weapons, but probably didn't think too much of it. The higher the tier of your weapons, the more affixes you'll get on them. Of course, I'm referring to the plus and the S rank upgrades that you can get at the Legendary Forge. To start off, there are some affixes that are just generally good. So I'll just list them here. Spread Inflammable Oil is available to a lot of weapons, making plus damage to oil enemies very accessible. Arrows Pierce the First Enemy for ranged weapons is very helpful, and sometimes it's borderline mandatory for some weapons to feel powerful, like the Nerves of Steel. Returning all arrows is also good for ranged builds, but this affix can only appear on select grenades, so keep a lookout for it when running a ranged setup before running into bosses. The slow down nearby enemies after a kill affix is quite useful for survival builds. This synergizes automatically with the frostbite mutation. Just be careful with this as the words slow down is not color coded unlike the other affixes. So that's generally for the good ones. 
Sometimes a starred affix might appear and it can lead to some pretty interesting builds, but they're completely unnecessary for your runs. All right, now let's talk about the actual damage boosts that you can get from the affixes. You've probably seen a couple of these on your weapons, like plus damage to bleeding or poison enemies. You might think that surely the damage boost from activating these affixes can't be that effective, right? To illustrate how important this is, here is a run with magic missiles and barnacle. Normally pretty average weapons if you ask a lot of the fanbase. But take a look at this. You might be wondering, just what in the world are those affixes that I'm using to melt through this endgame boss so easily? So one type of synergy that you can get on your weapons that can make it especially powerful are these self-synergizing ones. For example, this barnacle here generates a toxic cloud around the trap. However, at the same time, it also deals additional damage to poison targets. So this is what I mean by a self-synergizing weapon or skill. Normally, while the barnacle is fairly average, because it has this really powerful effect on its own, I was willing to take it with me on this run. And on top of that, you'll see that the magic missiles also has additional damage to bleeding targets. And as you can see, the knife dance skill gives me bleeding passively. It's much more likely to find ways to afflict statuses from skills, especially turrets. Every single turret in the game ranks pretty highly in terms of DPS. On top of having very accessible affixes, like spreading poison or oil around it. So this might be an example of how you can shape a build in your runs. You find a weapon that has plus damage to whatever kind of affixes, and then finding skills or other support weapons to revolve around those affixes. And of course, Dead Cells is seldom random. If you absolutely want to use a certain weapon, you can always reforge the affixes at the blacksmith between levels. Anyways, that's it for the guide. Follow these principles and soon you'll be hitting harder than the rock that killed Caesar in Jojo Bar 2. Enjoy the game.